Hey, welcome. This uh, is the second in a series of videos looking into um, e-bike options, not just the bikes themselves, but the different components. Today, I'm looking at which should I get, belt drive or, or versus the chain drive for that new electric bike. And, you know, it's an, it's an interesting uh, choice because in the past, there really hadn't been that choice. And, you know, looking for a bike is a lot of fun. There's a lot of options you have to consider. Uh, certainly much more than uh, when I was in my 20s. You just kind of, you know, I had a touring bike or you had a racing bike and maybe you had a BMX bike and there were just starting to be mountain bikes. So that drivetrain now is a big deal. And in, in the last video, I was talking about whether to go with a mid drive versus a hub drive. And you can um, see that video right up there, one side or the other. Um, so here in the States, probably Canada too, um, most people have not considered or even thought that there was anything other than a chain when it comes to driving a bicycle, making it go forward. But people in Europe have known for quite some time now that there is another option, and that is a belt drive. And that belt drive is what I am thinking about, and it has become much, much more popular and is gaining in popularity here in the States. So the purpose of this is to look at the pros and cons of belt drive versus chain drive. The pros. Now I have uh, some notes here on the screen in front of me, so I'm going to be looking away from the uh, lens for a little bit, so don't feel offended. Um, so, like just about everything in life, there are pros and there are cons to uh, belt drives versus chain drives. And you're going to need to take those into consideration as you um, are making your decision. So, belt drives, pros. Um, we're all familiar with the fact that chains are made up of metal links, they are, uh, there are pins, and there are rollers. Belts, however, are a single piece of carbon fiber cord with a polyurethane teeth built, uh, built into them. Uh, and a nylon outer coating to kind of uh, help reduce the wear. Now, because belts don't have any moving parts, they're going to last longer, much longer, and require little to no maintenance. Uh, chains, on the other hand, are subject to substantial wear uh, as friction between those moving parts that I just mentioned cause material to be um, removed over time. And that is typically, it's called chain stretch. That the, This wearing of the chain uh, negatively affects the performance of the bicycle and can cause wear to other parts, to, to other components, the derailleur, the, the uh, chain ring, that kind of stuff. Um, belts, on the other hand, don't stretch. They also don't rust, and they don't require lubrication either. either. So there's a, a huge benefits here. Um, you're not meaning you're not going to be getting grease on your clothing. You're not going to be getting grease on your hands. Um, that's a big plus in my mind. Uh, as I kind of alluded to a momentarily uh, a moment ago. Belts have a much, much longer lifespan. Um, 
so you're not going to be uh, needing to replace them uh, nearly as often as you would a chain. Now, I mentioned that there are cons as well. Uh, <laughs> if they're so good, if, if belts are so good, why don't bikes all come with belts? Well, the with this greatness, I guess you'd call it that, there are complexities that go along with it too. It's, it's much more uh, complicated. All bikes uh, that come with chains, they need to have a frame that is specifically designed to handle a belt. And they also require internally geared hub for shifting. The belt drive is, is complicated and, and you, uh, because you need to have uh, a break in the frame so that you can get the, the belt in and off. You, you can't break the, the belt like you can a chain. You know, you can use a, a chain break and take it apart. A belt is a solid piece, so you have to have a way of, of getting that on the bike. And that means you have to have um, some kind of a, a port to slide the uh, belt through on the frame or some kind of design. Um, I know Reese and Muller has a design where they have a real uh, a raised chain stay. And so they, they've figured out a way to uh, be able to have the belt on the bike, installed on the bike, without having to go through the chain stay or through the seat stay. Um, Belts, oh, belts are also incompatible with uh, derailleur systems. Um, the belt doesn't flex, so it can't walk up and down the, those rear uh, gears, those cogs. So, you can, again, you can't use a belt on this. That, that forces, that forces um, you to use an internally uh, geared hub. So all of these things are much more complicated. They're much more specialized. And as you can imagine, they end up uh, costing more. You're going to end up paying more for a belt drive bicycle than you will for a, you know, a chain bike, all things considered, uh, all things being equal. By the way, there are some pros, albeit they seem kind of minor in comparison. Um, pros to having a chain. Well, almost all bikes come with chains, so they're readily available. They're uh, easier to, to be modified. You can add and remove links, um, something you can't do with a belt. So they're easier in that regard. It's just being more commonplace makes life a little bit easier. You can walk in anywhere and get a chain for your bike. So like I was saying, it's kind of decision time. Um, are you going to stick with the old or are you going to go to the new kid on the block, belt drive? I haven't made a decision yet. Uh, I, I will say that I am really intrigued and leaning towards belt drive, but they're not as common. And that extra expense, uh, you know, that really has to play into your decision making as well. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Make sure you check out that previous video. Again, the link is, will be right above. And... Uh, Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate it.